Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Lara Croft Go. The second in the Go series after Hitman Go. And, well I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed. Let's go have a look around, shall we? Settings, not much to see. About is just the credits. Again, not really that much to see. And you have relics that you can collect throughout the stages and if you collect all of a particular kind of element or all of the gems you can get outfits and the outfits don't really do anything they just look different some of these are nice like i like the hitman one that's why i equipped it and the ones over here are all the ones you can unlock there's a few of them but again it doesn't really do anything it just gives you like trophies so let's just get into the game real quick <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a really quick intro for me, but there you go. The game's got seven campaigns. There's one that's unlocked here at the beginning, which is the entrance. I've done it in the Maze of Snakes, and I've checked out the Cave of Fire and the Mirror the Mirror of Spirits. I keep thinking Mirror Spirits, not Mirror of Spirits. And these two recommend that you go back and play the previous ones before you go and try them, but you don't need to. If you're smart enough, you can figure it out right off the bat. I've checked them both out and they're not really that different from the main campaign so let's just go and play the maze of stones shall we you can pick whatever level you want to play from these books and while the it's annoying that it doesn't tell you how many um unlockable like relics there are to find in the level if you come back here you can come back and see where you've missed them so that's kind of nice let's load into the level shall we the loading times in this game are atrocious. They can be anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute. When the game loads up, it takes ages to load, and when you go from the menu to the game or the game to the menu, it can seriously take a really long time. And these puzzles are often really simple, and even reloading after you've died takes like 10 to 15 seconds. It just... <laughs> seriously, it's pretty bad. And the performance is pretty bad as well. The frame rate will drop a ridiculous amount in game sometimes and even in the menus you could have saw it back there the upside being it's basically a turn-based puzzle game so it's not like it matters so here we are the only control you have in this game outside of like object interaction is moving there are some hidden objects found in the background there that you can tap on in order to get them obviously they're very easy to miss and i'm not entirely sure why i can't just like press a button and see them they're just annoying like that. We have an enemy here that can kill us. Thankfully, they do let us see what the enemies look like. We can just move into them to kill them. That's perfectly fine. Another little collectible up there. The frozen spider. There's one of those unique relics every chapter. And there's also gems every chapter to find. That's all pretty simple. So the game moves like a... Um, the game obviously moves like a turn-based sort of game where you i'm just trying to find out the right pattern to killing this damn spider but i appear to be having no luck with this did not mean to move into that but apparently i did because the controls in this game are annoying since it works on isometric instead of being, you know, like, straight up, down, left, right, that means that the controls can be imprecise. This would not be a problem if I could use the D-pad. You can't use the D-pad. How annoying is that, right? I know, it's a pain in the ass, and even worse is that I'm back here. The game has checkpoints that just annoyingly irregular in how they decide to show up. Go grab the spear. And I'm going to have to throw the spear here to get this guy. Right, now I turn this on. This lets me move on. If I can get the right direction to go in, for God's sake. Seriously, it is kind of hard without actively looking at the joystick to, you know, figure out what direction you're going to be moving in. Because... It'll bugger up on you at the absolute worst of times. It, it really sucks. I really wish you could use the D-pad for this game. I'm not entirely sure why you can't. I think I've screwed myself there. I have to do this.
Alright, I got that spider out of the way. And I get to move on. The game is basically that. It's the same sort of puzzles as Hitman Go, where you have to figure out how to get the everything to move in the right way, and basically just moving in the right direction. A specific amount of times will finish the puzzle for you. I mean, that is basically every puzzle game in a nutshell. That I mean, that's fine. It's just it's, it's exactly the same thing as Hitman Go, except they've given the presentation a bit of an overhaul. Stuff moves. It's not like everything's like pieces on a chessboard anymore. But again, since everything moves in a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Since everything moves more or less like a, like a chess piece on a chessboard anyway, it's not like it matters. So, okay, move down, move that back. There's an unlockable down there that I can get. Since everything moves like a chess piece anyway, not like, it doesn't, it's not like it really matters. They made it look visually more interesting. So, oh dear. Alright, oh, okay. So I've gone and screwed myself here. What is gravity? <laughs> Seriously, she hit terminal velocity in like half a second. That's, that's insane. Play video games. Loading time, loading time, loading time for such a simple puzzle too. And I'm back here as well, so I have to do this shit again. Up, left, right. Down, left, lever. Down, down, lever. Across. Across. Up. Up. There we go. All the puzzle mechanics are... Well, to be fair, the puzzles themselves are actually pretty well designed. You see everything that you're going to run into before you have a chance of really getting killed by it, and they... It's just... It's a well-made puzzle game. It's just the same as Hitman Go, the performance is worse, the loading times are worse, and the secret hunting, which is literally just if, see something in the background and tap on it, is a pain in the ass. And for that, I can't really say I like it. It's just a... I mean, I didn't... I mean, I liked Hitman Go because of the neat amount of ways that it had to play around with everything, but even playing the really late campaigns that you aren't supposed to play until you finish the earlier ones... The game's still like... I've screwed this up. I better get myself eaten. But even playing the later campaigns, it's just the same stuff. Just played around with a little bit. Him and Go felt neat because it felt like a neat way to turn that series into a puzzle. This doesn't really feel like it's done much at all. It just looks better. That's really all it does differently to Hitman Go. And even then the puzzles aren't as interesting because... They don't seem to have as many ways to play around with the formula with Lara Croft, so... Well, there you go. Okay, so I shoot you, then I shoot you. Then I throw this up here. And that means I get to move on to the next part of the level. Unlockable there, could not be bothered. Okay, this will be interesting. Shoot him. Shoot him. I don't want to shoot him because I'll immediately move into his path of things, so I'll throw this at him. Did not mean to go backwards there. Controls are absolutely terrible. Where am I going? Fuck. Right, I've got to go around to the other side. Although, if I guess correctly, if I shoot him... Oh, no. I guess it's just there to keep you from wandering down to the bottom floor too easily. Although that seems kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? I've buggered it. Dead. Hmm. 
Loading time, loading time, loading time, loading time, loading time, loading time, loading, 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 loading. Seriously, these are too long. Like, this is ridiculously long for a game like this. Okay, so. Onto that. Onto that. Now we wait. Bloody secret down there. And... Why did they give me a spear, but not actually let me use it? Did I just get lucky? I'm not sure. Maybe the spear will show up in the next level. Well, no, it can't, because you have to be able to select individual levels, so... Yeah, what was the point of that spear again? Maybe it's one of the ways to find one of the relics. There are points, at least there were points in the previous one, where there's like... Sort of cinematic cutscenes going on. There's this giant snake that follows you around. And that's all kind of neat, but... The game is also incredibly likely to drop frames there, so... It's really not that impressive. Tilt that lever, and that happens. Okay, now if I bring this over here, then go back... Then I can do this. Although I imagine I'm going to need that. Yeah, I'm probably going to need that to kill that spider, aren't I? Oh, no, I'm not. Just need to time this right, and I get to move on. It really isn't that difficult. The later puzzles are a fair bit harder, but at the same time, they all make sense, and it's not like they're, um... It's not like they're hard to understand in any sense of the word. Get this blade out of the way. Screwed that up. Because of course I did. This is me we're talking about. At least the game speeds up to be like, hey, there's um, an animation going on here. Alright. Now if I hit the green or that... It will bring the spiders in. I probably want to kill these two snakes first. They're probably not necessary for the puzzle. Alright, so if I pull these two levers, they will start this sort of falling staircase. So let's do that one, and then let's do this one. Hop on this staircase. Yep, that's that seems about right. You'd think the puzzles would start getting, like, really hard, but the... Where I expected the difficulty to be was in the last couple of campaigns, so... Yeah, I'm... I'm not really sure what the deal is. Alright. Now I know what this does because I've seen it before. Alright, so... Okay, so this little lizard guy here will follow me around. So I have to get him to fall off the edge. Or not. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen, but I kind of got stuck there. What's the point of that? And so it begins another loading time. Thank you. 
Right, as I thought, there's no real point to going back up there. Oh, I get it. I'm supposed to fall down here so I can tilt this. And now I can head back up without... Yeah, okay, I follow. And then if I move back up here, that one's standing on a pressure switch. And if I throw the spear, the pressure switch gets let off. That's how you do it. There's one of those cutscenes. Yep, hello, snakey. Loading time. I'll make this the last puzzle and then I'll end this video because it's 16 minutes already of roughly the same thing, so... You get how it works, it's a very simple puzzle game, more or less. It makes sense, it's just... The controls suck, the performance is bad, it takes too long to load, and it... Doesn't... Whoops. It doesn't really do anything to... Improve on the formula or make it more interesting the way Hitman did, so... I don't know, I'm just, I'm not really that big of a fan of this one. I'm hoping that Deus Ex Go, if it ever shows up on the Vita or the PS4, has more improvements on the formula than this game does, but yeah, if the only improvement this game really made was the tapping the stuff in the background to find the secret sort of thing, I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm really not. Another bloody secret there. Seriously, there's a ton of these. Like, 32 in this chapter alone. That's insane to me. Right, so I take it, I'm gonna have to, um... That was a strangely slow animation. And now I can go up and shoot him, and I can just walk out of here freely. Another unlockable there. We. The game's 10 bucks. you'll get the PS4 version with it, which probably runs way better than this one. And it's 20% off for the first week, I imagine, if you have PlayStation Plus. I, I don't really think it's worth it, honestly. Shame, really. Yep, just can't use the D-pad, can't use the right stick. I mean, I don't know why you'd use the right stick, but you can't, so there you go. I imagine the trick here is trying to figure out how to get that spider to line up directly under you. Because if you can do that, then you'll be able to kill that spider. There is probably some trick to this, I just can't see it, because I hate these sort of things where you have to sync yourself up with the movements of the other creatures so that you can... or the other people, as it was in Hitman. So that you can get the puzzle done right. I hate these sorts of things, and... Well, it's a Go game, so I imagine this is something that will be coming up a fair bit more often in the next few levels. The exit's probably just right there, too. Um... Didn't mean to do that, but again, the controls in this game are a pain in the ass. Well, 
Yeah, you know what? Screw it. 20 minutes. I've had enough. So, Lara Croft Go. It's the same thing as Hitman Go, but it's less impressive. The port is pretty bad. It doesn't run very well. The loading times suck, and the controls suck, and the unlockables suck. So, yeah. Not, not a very good situation to be in. I, I would much rather play Hitman Go over this one. So, there's not really that much else to say, and yeah. I'll just wait for it to go back to the main menu. But yeah. This has been Blue Maxima. This has been Blue Maxima. Don't make me say it again, please. Seriously, this is like a 30 second loading time already. Come on. Thirty-five. What a piece of shit. That was like a 50 second load time. That's unacceptable. This has been Blue Maxima and I'll see you all next time.